In case you haven't heard, internet gaming disorder is now a thing. It's the idea that people can get addicted to playing online video games. It's not a true disorder yet. Uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, aka the DSM, the manual that psychiatrists use to determine what is and is not currently considered aberrant behavior, has decided to list it as a possible disorder uh, warranting further study. In order to determine if a person has internet gaming disorder, psychiatrists would look for these people to meet five of the following nine conditions within a year. So let's go through them and just see which ones I might have, you know, just for funsies. Uh, number one, preoccupation or obsession with internet games. Yeah, okay. Uh, withdrawal symptoms when not playing internet games. Don't know what that is. I've never quit. I'm not a quitter. Uh, a buildup of tolerance. More time needs to be spent playing the games. Uh, I do spend more and more time playing a game if I like it. So maybe uh, the person has tried to stop or curb playing internet games, but has failed to do so. Again, I'm not a quitter. I don't stop, so I wouldn't know. The person has had a loss of interest in other life activities, such as hobbies. I mean, what other hobbies are there? What's, I don't, what's, why would you do things that aren't internet gaming? Uh, a person has had continued overuse of internet games, even with the knowledge of how much they impact a person's life. I mean, I saw how much it was impacting my life and I just sort of built my life around it. So I don't think that one counts. Uh, the person lied to others about his or her internet game usage. I have done that. That has happened <laughs> in my past. Fair enough. Uh, the person uses internet games to relieve anxiety or guilt. It's a way to escape. Well, yeah. Why else would I want to gun people down except for to get away from my real problems? Uh, or the person has lost or put at risk an opportunity or relationship because of internet games. Uh, again, I've built my life around internet games. So um, if somebody doesn't like it, I just wouldn't date that person, for instance. Uh, so I'd say that I qualify for four, maybe four and a half of these, which means that I'm fine. <laughs> Woo. Uh, obviously, there's debate over whether or not this should actually be considered a problem, with many gamers upset about experts pathologizing otherwise normal behavior. And I sympathize with that viewpoint since, as far as I know, there's no television disorder, but I know plenty of people who are preoccupied with TV shows, who get itchy if they can't watch Game of Thrones right when it comes out, uh, who increase the amount of time that they watch, uh, who try to stop binging Netflix shows, but they can't, who watch TV instead of engaging in other hobbies, and yeah, who use TV as an escape from their problems. But hey, if enough people's lives are being negatively affected by this one thing, then yeah, maybe psychiatrists should look into it with a bit more depth. And that's one of the nice things about defining a problem like this. Uh, it tells scientists that this is a serious topic worthy of more research. A good example has already popped up in the form of an editorial in the journal Addiction, where researchers at the University of Adelaide bring up a topic that's fascinating and I think definitely worth looking into, which is the idea of loot boxes. As many of you already know, I have a Twitch channel where I play video games every weekday. Usually it's Overwatch, uh, which is a first person shooter that does include a loot box system. Loot boxes are just what they sound like, uh, little packages of joy that contain items you can use in the game that you're playing. They're random, so you never know what you're going to get in one. And depending on the game you're playing, you could get, say, a very common voice line or an ultra rare weapon that might be necessary to win the game. It's the random randomness that's really the genius of loot boxes. Uh, you can't just buy the character skin you want. You have to buy 20, 50, 100 loot boxes and open them all hoping to get what you want. And if you don't want get what you want, then too bad, I guess you have to buy more loot boxes. Some games give you things in loot boxes that can actually help you win the game or are even required to win the game, which makes buying loot boxes a necessity if you want to compete with other players. Overwatch only gives out cosmetic items, and for that reason, I've always supported their loot box system. 
Uh, you don't need to buy loot boxes to win, and you can earn loot boxes by just playing the game, so you never need to spend any money at all. But that's how Blizzard, the company that makes Overwatch, can continue to make enough money so that they can keep giving us new characters, maps, and game modes for free. That said, the researchers studying the psychology of loot boxes do make me wonder if even Overwatch's system is predatory. They're starting to change my mind, even though I love loot boxes, in part because I love gambling. The researchers point out that loot boxes, even the ones you don't need to win the game, are a form of gambling that satisfy that same little psychological trigger in your brain as uh, scratch tickets and slot machines. But unlike scratch tickets and slot machines, loot box sales are legally allowed to target little kids who play the game. Not only might these little kids get access to a parent's credit card and cause havoc, but they might be getting introduced to a gambling addiction really early on in their lives. And I say that while being a person who got into gambling as a little kid. I used to run a little casino for my friends, complete with a roulette wheel that I won playing a token-only slot machine at an amusement park. Uh, and I taught them blackjack. When I got older, I taught all of my high school friends poker, and we had a Sunday night poker session. Uh, and now, you know, I am a fairly normal person, but I'm definitely prone to addictions. I've put in hundreds or maybe thousands, I don't know, of hours into Overwatch, definitely thousands of hours into Civilization, and I literally wrote the script for this video while taking breaks to catch Pokemon. Uh, the only reason I don't have a diagnosable problem is because, again, I've made games a part of my livelihood and because I have a very understanding boyfriend. There are other problems with loot boxes, though, that even adults should be aware of. The researchers point out that many of these games collect data on the user, and then they use that data to manipulate loot drop rates in order to maximize the amount of money that they think they can get you to spend. That's pretty impressive from a psychological and programming point of view, but from a morality point of view, it's downright sleazy. I'm interested in this editorial and in the direction that other researchers might be able to take their study of these manipulative systems. Their research could even inform public policies since some countries are beginning to enact laws about loot boxes, uh, like China, where game publishers have to tell you the odds of loot box drops, and Belgium, they've outlawed loot boxes altogether. So I guess I'm being even more and more convinced that even cosmetics-only loot boxes may be unethical. But hey, I have a slight gaming obsession, so I'm just going to keep grinding out that Overwatch loot. Uh, also, I get to kill people in order to get it, so it's basically an addiction that's like tailor-made for me. You know, I, I might have a problem.